All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? Well, as longtime viewers of this show know, I very much subscribe to the edict that personnel is policy, that while rhetoric is nice, what you end up putting into practice and who you choose to do so matters probably more than anything else. Unfortunately, our media turns everything into polarization, into the top line figures, when in reality, the people who really run things in the US government are agency heads and other appointees who most Americans cannot name but have immense power over our lives. One of those agencies is the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, otherwise known as the ATF. Now, if you're my age, you probably don't have the same visceral reaction to that acronym. For, but for people a little bit older than us, almost everybody knows it. And it relates to two incidents, Waco and Ruby Ridge. The ATF used to be one of the most reviled and culturally polarizing agencies in America. And the head of that agency matters, especially in this administration. Biden has been pretty silent on culture wars in America. The only two things I've seen him really step into while president was the MLB boycott of Georgia and on guns. Remember on the campaign trail, his signature line of attack was against Bernie Sanders for being against, to, uh, for being too friendly to the NRA. And he said he wanted to work with Beto O'Rourke on guns. He's genuinely committed to the gun control issue in a way that previous Democratic presidents have just not been. And so it was with great interest that a lot of people saw that on the very same day he signed executive orders that Biden announced his pick for the new head of the ATF, former career agent David Chipman. Chipman is a longtime gun control advocate, which is fine. It's Biden's presidency after all. But what really gave me concern, and something I think should give you all some as well, is his longtime record in one of the most disastrous efforts in ATF history, and that was Waco. Now, some of you may not know what happened at Waco, so here's an extremely be brief reminder. There was this religious cult. It was known as the Branch Dravidians. They were living on a compound in Waco, Texas, near where I grew up, actually. The ATF suspected them of stockpiling weapons and dealing guns illegally, so they obtained a search warrant. Now, instead of acting normal, they came in with a lot of guns. Now, nobody knows who shot first, but it turned into a brutal shootout. It left several agents dead and it developed into a 51-day siege where the compound was assaulted by federal agents, and at the end, the entire compound was burned to the ground, killing 76 Branch Davidians, including 25 children. The feds claim it was the Branch Davidians' fault, the surviving Branch Davidians, they say it was the feds. Nobody knows. But I think it can generally be said this. The ATF in particular acted incredibly stupidly and irresponsibly in escalating things to that level in the first place. Okay, so this is where Chipman comes in. Biden's ATF pick was literally there at Waco in 1993. He was a case agent at that field office for five years. That alone is not disqualifying. People live and they learn. But to me, his most recent defense of the ATF conduct is. In a 2020 Ask Me Anything on Reddit, Chipman claimed that the Branch Davidians had used two caliber, two 50 caliber guns to shoot down two Texas Air National Guard helicopters. There's a lot of issues with that statement. Number one, yes, it is known that the, at the compound, they did shoot at the helicopters, but neither of those helicopters get, did go down. Furthermore, according to the feds, 250 caliber guns were not recovered from that site. It's a total lie. But worse, it reveals this. Chipman is a gun control advocate, which again is a perfectly legitimate position. But in that AMA, he was justifying gun control based upon an outright lie. And worse, a lie that conveniently absolves his field office and his agency from one of the most horrific incidents yet involving an American federal agency and American citizens in modern history. This is especially dangerous at a time like this. A major warning we made here on the show after January 6th was this. Yes, it was horrible. Trump is a bad actor, all of that. But 100 more cops that day, the entire thing looks different. Don't need thousands of National Guardsmen locking down the Capitol. We didn't need new fencing, didn't need a new domestic terrorism, terrorism law, none of that. But establishment power centers in our society are pushing for all of them to criminalize or at very least use the powers of law enforcement to discourage dissent. The most recent example of this is the Capitol Police literally sending California Highway Patrol to the door of a left-wing podcaster who was tagged in a tweet they deemed threatening to AOC. That is unacceptable. 
It highlights the extraordinary danger of turning law enforcement authorities into political enforcers. Putting someone in a position of power like this, with the already stated aim of gun control, and who has a record of not only participating, but basically justifying the single most powerful event in spurring gun sales and domestic terrorism in the United States is one of the worst things you could do. To consider this, even if you believe in gun control, do you want a freaking Waco defender in charge of that effort? And if you don't, it confirms the worst fears some people had about the Biden administration. I have no idea if anything will come from this, and I really hope not. But I do know this, empowering people, especially in the realm of law enforcement, where they have life and death authority over the rest of the population, should be the area where lies like this just cannot be tolerated. Waco is a shameful event in American history. Anyone who defends any part of it should not be anywhere near a federal agency. And that was really the part to me, Crystal, which was, like I said, you want to believe in gun control? That's fine. But even if you did, you really want the Waco guy in charge? Right. I mean, it's like there's it, plenty of people out there who believe in gun control. Who want it Waco <laughs> and who don't defend Waco. Who I mean, like, and, and uh, once again, consider this gun sales. I have probably never been spurred by any other single event than Waco or Ruby Ridge. Or, those, or white supremacist domestic oh, yeah, terrorism. Yeah. You know, Timothy McVeigh all and all that. It all happened all because of stuff. Waco. Yes. Exactly. It was probably the single most anti-government spurring event in modern American history. And a lot of people, 9-11 basically whitewashed a lot of this stuff. But this was like a big thing in our politics for a long <laughs> yes, time. Yes, yes. And... What happens right now? Gun sales are through the roof. You basically can't even buy a gun at this point. Like, there are waiting lines out the door. Ammunition is basically unattainable across the U.S. Gun sales spiked at a higher rate, I think, than any at any other time in modern memory over the last year in 2020. And Brett Weinstein actually is the one who told me this. He's like, yeah, look, you can say anything you want, but millions of Americans bought a weapon in the last year with the consideration they might have to shoot someone else in self-defense, political violence, like who the hell knows? None of that is good, as intentions are high. And putting people like this in charge of an already one of the most charged events in American political history, that's just not defensible to me. To me, it just says a lot about the way power operates mm -hmm. in America. I mean, you were actually a little more charitable than I would have been. For me, anyone who was involved in Waco, they should never serve in federal government at all, I ever mean, again. It's a pretty Let good alone standard. people but who were involved with it and then continue to lie about last it. Last year. And engage year. in conspiracy yeah. theories surrounding it. Like, that's completely unacceptable and inexcusable. So even putting aside you know, how the right wing might respond mm -hmm. to this or whatever. And they're very upset because he is extraordinarily pro-gun control. And so part of the critique here from them is focused on his views on guns. But yeah, why is it that people like this, and this is routinely, and this isn't just a Biden administration story, this is like throughout American history, some of the most nefarious actors yeah. who have, you know, been associated with some of the most evil deeds in American history they just continue to climb the ladder as if it never happened. It really is wild to see. And so, look, maybe he'll be good at the ATF. Maybe I'll do a good job. Maybe this, you know, sort of horrific event doesn't uh, repeat itself. But is it so much to ask that people who were involved with this deeply shameful event that left dozens of children killed and burned to death don't have a place in our politics anymore? I, you know, and you read that op-ed and it Again, he's making, he's doing this conspiracy theory in service of gun. He's like, well, you know, the, one of the reasons we need to ban guns is because at Waco, they shot down two of our helicopters. And again, this is, if you were at Waco, you know that's not true. So from the very beginning, and I put that, that report from Congress, the ATF, the FBI, and everybody involved tried to cover up as much of this as humanly possible. And to this day, there's still a lot of questions oh, yeah. about who shot first oh, yeah. and exactly what, what was going on in terms of the fire and tear gas and you know should you really storm a compound full of women and children and all of that and black who weren't I, bothering I can go, anybody who, well, yeah, I, mean, I can look, go down the list they were not like there was a lot of ugly stuff going on was in the David so I don't want to like yeah I don't want to excuse was, it but, but like, the idea that this had to end right. with how many people 70 yeah 76 people 20 some 25 children, children being right. killed I mean that was just an outrageous 
abuse of federal power and an outrageous end to the whole situation. And yeah, the fact that this and it's also interesting that it totally escapes um, mainstream media attention. Of course it does. Right. Because and, you know, in a way they were all complicit in what happened at Waco. They built this whole thing up. It was the greatest thing for ratings that ever happened mm. to them. And in, and in terms of the cover up, I mean, if you want to go and I, I've done a lot of digging into Waco over the years about exactly in terms of follow ups, investigation, you know, that report pretty much after like 1997, it was just gone. It was like disappeared into the ether. And then, you know, 9-11 happened and nobody really talked about it. And McVeigh actually is what changed the discourse even more because then everybody basically channeled their energy and hatred towards Timothy McVeigh and some, and, and obviously he's a terrible guy, you know, he blew up and killed, you know, hundreds of people too. So he's not exactly like a sympathetic actor, but what it did is it made it so that the focus became on them. And there was never any discussion about, oh, hey, how do we have this burgeoning domestic terrorism movement, yeah. white supremacy movement, gun movement? How the hell did all of that happen? It happened because of Waco. Go and listen to many of these people. And it's not a justification. It's a, look, you could, if you're doing, going to do something horrific and then cover it up to the extent that so many of these people did, then it's going to have really bad consequences. And not just that, if today, in 2020, we all know what happened was effed up, okay? Like, hey, I'm watching my language, but like, it, it makes me still like viscerally angry when you really think about exactly what went down there. If you're still defending that in service of like defending your agency and in favor and your of a ideology. government, your ideology, mm -hmm. then you have no place at, uh, you know, think about how much power the ATF has yeah. over guns, over, I mean, it's over so much. Well, and like, there's a lot of justified concern right now about increasing militia activity, yeah. increasing domestic terror, especially white supremacist terror. The amount of militia activity in the 90s dwarfs mm -hmm. yeah, it's not what's going on now. Right. And a lot of it stems from Ruby Ridge, and stems from Waco. So if you want to get away from that path, you've got to understand, again, this is like people have responsibility and they have agency and they're accountable and culpable for their own actions. But you also have to understand the way that these the way that these actions from the U.S. federal government reverberated and created a blowback yep. that fueled this whole movement. That's right. All right. I'm looking forward to read our next crystal.